Climate research has come a long way in the past, from low-resolution models with grid sizes on the order of hundreds of kilometres, down to global atmospheric simulations with 2.5 kilometre cell sizes, and even regional simulations with 150 metre grid spacing using our new simulation model, ICON. ICON's our Earth system model, which means it simulates the atmosphere and the ocean and how they're coupled together, also with cycles of matter like carbon and water, and we use it to understand how the Earth system works and also explore the implications and magnitude of um, anthropogenic climate change. Diamond was initially just a comparison of models running in the atmosphere or running, simulating the atmosphere with a fixed ocean properties. Diamond++ plus plus was how we envisioned an increment on diamond. And the idea there was to couple the atmosphere to the ocean and really produce the very first coupled simulations, coupled meaning atmosphere and ocean, as two fluids interacting with one another to determine the evolution of Earth's weather and climate. The Amazon is the green lung of our planet. Flying over the rainforest from the Atlantic, we see an explosion-like development of cumulonimbus clouds every morning, and they're weakening at night following the diurnal cycle of radiation over land. To model the physics of the atmosphere, we solve the underlying physical equation. Those are differential equations that we know and that we can solve using numerical methods. To solve them, we need a grid to compute uh, the value, the state of the atmosphere at every grid point, and we need a computer to integrate the equation. Diamond++ is based on ICON and is set up as a globally coupled model with a grid resolution of 5 kilometers for both the atmosphere and the ocean. The model is run on the DKRZ supercomputer Mistral, where the model output is also stored, analysed and visualised. This specific Diamond++ experiment ran on 270 nodes, with a performance of two simulated days per day, and produced 160 terabytes of data. So like if you look uh, in the simulation, I mean, you can see that the cloud, they organize on different scales. You have this large scale structure of cloud, but also the cloud tend to organize on smaller scale. And really, if you use a model with a grid spacing of 100 kilometers, you cannot see this small scale organization. And one of the big questions at the moment is whether this small scale organization important is for the climate and for the state of the atmosphere. Finally, now we can really begin to resolve this small-scale phenomena on the full planet, which we were not able to do previously. Lake Victoria is one of the largest lakes in the world and is located in the East African Highlands. In red, we see the temperature of the land surface and the daily cycle of warming over the day and cooling in the night. The blue surface beneath some clouds shows strong precipitation. High evaporation can be observed on the land after rainfall and over the lake during the night. Here one can also see the wind moving over the water. The lake warms less and more slowly than the land surface which creates a pressure difference that triggers a circulation from the cold lake to the warm land. This forces the development of convection around the lake and prohibits its development over the lake itself. The goal of Diamond++ Plus Plus is to study the interaction of small-scale features between the ocean and the atmosphere in a coupled system. The Diamond++ Plus Plus has a resolution of 5 kilometers in the ocean and in the atmosphere and you can see all these small scale features. Borneo is the largest island in Asia and is located on the equator north of Java. Beneath the ocean surface we can see the shape of the sea floor. 
Visualized on the ocean and land surface, we see the daily cycle of warming and cooling. This cycle can also be observed looking at the evaporation, which seems to pause on land during the night. During the daytime, we can also see strong convection developing over land and strong wind gusts over the ocean, with high wind speeds marked in yellow. The ocean surface now shows salinity, with high levels of salinity marked in white. Dark spots indicate the freshening of seawater after heavy rainfall. The convection propagates from the land to the ocean and stays there during the night but collapses in the morning as the land heats up and forces the development of convection over land. A new cycle begins. The big driver for a lot of this research is, of course, climate change. The climate's changing, humans are responsible. But what does it really mean? How will storms and extremes change? How how quickly will it warm? Where will it warm more and where will it warm less? The data is visualized using Paraview, which runs on specially equipped GPU nodes that are configured for remote access. All processing and visualization is done remotely on the supercomputer. The European weather is strongly influenced by atmospheric conditions over the North Atlantic. Here we see the development of an Icelandic low and an associated Azores high further south, annotated using blue and red contour lines. The ocean and parts of the land show temperature on the same scale. In darker colours, we can also see eddies of the North Atlantic current moving very slowly towards Europe. Linked to the low pressure system, we see several fronts and a large cloud band moving east. This cloud band brings heavy rainfall to the British Isles, as can be seen by blue marks on the ocean and land surface. One can also observe the daily cycle of evaporation on land, as well as strong wind gusts over the ocean. One of the things that you, re you, you really can't over, overstate is the importance of visualization, especially in the earth sciences, because we, we know what to look for. Visualization is an enormously fruitful way to have a very quick look at a simulation and see if it makes sense. Does it you know, pass the plausibility test? This visualization shows the height of the ocean surface, with areas below mean sea level in blue and areas above in red. Arrows indicating the ocean surface velocity highlight two tropical storms in 2016, Matthew and Nicole, exhibiting strong circular winds. While we zoom in towards the Agalus current south of Africa, we can see the complexity of the ocean's flow patterns. Here we use the logarithmic scale for the velocity. Some of these eddies are several hundred meters thick and enclose large quantities of water and energy.